Hi, this is David McCann for WebTNG. This video is for people who are serious about WordPress security and who are interested in the WebArcs security solution. I'm going to do a full walkthrough and review, look at all the things that WebArcs offers and at some of the areas that WebArcs doesn't cover. This is the WebArcs website here. The central feature of WebArcs is the web application firewall. You can see that it protects from OWASP vulnerabilities, protects from plugin vulnerabilities, blocks malicious bots and spam, prevents malware infection, cloud-based firewall management, writes custom firewall rules, new rules are received automatically, and does not slow down the website. We're going to go over all of these features when we do the walkthrough and I'll show you where you enable them and configure them. WebArcs has security and vulnerability monitoring. They keep tabs on plugins and watch for vulnerabilities published about different plugins as well as doing their own research. They make sure your site is going over SSL. They check blacklists. They report error logs, uptime monitoring domain expiration monitoring, SSL certificate expiration monitoring, and then they have reports. There's a dashboard, which is where we're going to go next. And they have a number of reports on the dashboard, as well as the ability to send email alerts. I know WebArcs as a WordPress security solution, but it can also just be used with PHP, and with some other PHP content management systems like Magento, which is used in e-commerce, Drupal and Joomla, which are other content management systems like WordPress, but not as popular. So let's go through the process of setting up a site. After you create an account and log in for the first time, you're presented with this dialog where you enter the URLs of the websites you want to add to WebArcs. I've got a test site set up and I'll add this it tells us that we have to install the firewall plugin to activate the firewall so you click the setup plugin and here you're going to have to enter the username and password of the administrator and it'll try to install the plugin for you. I'm going to install the plugin manually though and download it. And now I'm going to go over to my test site. As you can see, it's kind of your vanilla new install, but I removed all the plugins. WordPress installs a couple plugins. By default, I always take those out. And one of the first plugins that I install is a security plugin and I've been using WebArcs now for a while. So WebArcs has been my solution. I used to use iTheme Security, but I've just been having some problems with it, and so I switched over to using WebArcs as kind of the center of my security stack. So I'm gonna upload that plugin and install it and activate it. So you find the WebArcs settings you're under settings and it has a new menu item called security. If you go to the license, you want to make sure that it says that it's activated here. If your client ID or client secret key are missing, I'll show you where you can get those on the WebArcs dashboard. And there's a button here where you can test the connection between the plugin and the dashboard. And it says it was successful. So let's go step through the steps here of setting it up. First, I'm going to go to the hardening tab. These hardening options, some of them I think are really important. Some of them may be optional. I have an article, the Site Builder's Guide to WordPress Security, where I go over almost every one of these and a lot more as well. But let's just look through the settings here. This is going to disable the editor inside of the WordPress admin to edit theme and plugin files. I kind of see that as something of an optional item maybe because it's only available to admins. 
and if a bad guy gains access to your admin then I'm not sure how much this is going to help but it doesn't hurt anything and I don't usually edit those directly anyway. This moves the log folder to make it harder for people to see it. There is a scanner called WP Scan that scans websites for WordPress vulnerabilities and it's used by hackers. It's also used by security professionals and other people, but this setting will disable that. There's the option to disable user enumeration. So WordPress has a vulnerability that it's very easy to get the user information, everything except the email address and the password of any user who's published an article. So I think that's a vulnerability because there are two parts typically to the login, the username and the password, and you're giving away one of the parts and you don't have to. WebArcs disables that. Now recently, you know, there's been a, a rise in the use of the WordPress REST API. And it's also possible to enumerate users via the REST API. And I've suggested that when you check this, it disables it for the REST API as well. It looks like that might be included in a future version. There's the option to hide your WordPress version. That's also something that I think is kind of optional. But activity logs, I think, are a very good thing because if there's any problem, you're able to go back and see who logged in, what plugins were installed, and so on. So I think of activity logs as being very important. The next thing is disabling XML RPC. RPC stands for Remote Procedure Call. This is rarely used. I think Jetpack may use it. So if you're using Jetpack, you may need to leave it on. But otherwise, this is a good thing to turn off because people can brute force a login through this. So it's nice to have it protected. Then there's recaptcha options for the comments form, the login form, the registration form, the password reset, and then the type of recaptcha you're gonna use. And you get these from Google. I normally turn them on but I'm not gonna stop the video right now to enter the keys. I'll do that after a while. But one thing I wanted to say, I've mentioned some of these are optional in my mind and some are very important. My policy is if it's easy to turn on an optional security feature, I do it, but I don't necessarily go out of my way to find a solution for something that's optional. However, if I think it's critical or crucial central security practice, then I will find a plugin or you know a snippet of code or, or whatever is needed to take care of that. So that's why I've left a lot of these things I said might be optional on. Next thing we look at is the firewall, and you definitely want this on. What this is, these are the rules here, you know, block the IP for an hour after 10 blocked requests over a period of a half hour. So I usually increase this. There have been times when, you know, like I'll increase it for three hours or something. If I'm the only user on the site, I bump this down. If you have a lot of users on the site or maybe some people who aren't so tech savvy or who might accidentally get logged out and not know what to do, then it makes sense to leave it higher. And then so you have a 30 minute window. I leave that enabled. And then you can whitelist. You can say for people who are logged in, which of these shouldn't have firewall rules run against them? You know, who do you kind of trust who might be, you know, doing legitimate things? On this side, it's just me, so the other ones don't really matter. Then these are rules that are put in the HT access files. These are directives to the web server, and WebArcs writes to the HT access file, which is in the root of your website directory. Now, sometimes features can be enabled via a plugin and not with something written to the HT access file, but they say it's a little bit faster to have it in the HT access file. And WebArc seems to do a pretty good job of managing that. So I haven't had any problems of things getting corrupted or anything like that. So I usually leave all these on and image hot linking also. Now here's an interesting thing. A lot of times you'll get some rules that you might want to add and and this gives you an interface to do that so you don't have to you know fire up FTP and go into it on the file system level and you have an option of where your custom rules are going to go at the bottom or above then you can whitelist or block IP addresses 
and it's possible to block a range here. And you save the settings. We go to the login protection. Now there's an option to move the WP login page. I also think of it as an optional security procedure. It's called security through obscurity. You're just hiding things. So if you're using a weak password, just hiding it won't keep you safe. You'll get hacked anyway because there are a lot of ways to find the login page. But what this can do is it can cut down on the churn because there's some bots that just try that one thing. So it's kind of it's optional. I've done it for some sites for a while, but I just stopped doing it because it's kind of a hassle. And some third-party plugins maybe don't know, you know, won't find the login page correctly or something. So I don't use it, but it's there as an option. And you can do an automatic brute force IP pan. This is, is kind of like the hardening options. You can choose what you've got here. So I usually bump it up and knock it down the number of attempts when I'm the only person on the site. But here you want to do it usually, you can do it in shorter time span because the bots are just trying over and over again. And this is an interesting feature, login hours. If you know that you're never going to log into the site in the middle of the night, you can shut it off, the login option. And then two-factor authentication. And so what this does is when you enable it, the user can go into their user profile and turn it on. So it doesn't turn it on for users automatically. And we'll set up two-factor authentication in a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it on, but it won't take effect yet. And then here's a list of IP addresses that are currently being blocked. And these are ones, again, you, ha you can create a whitelist if you want. So if you have visitors from the European Union, you can set up a GDPR cookie notice. I don't usually use this, but it's very convenient for people. You don't have to go get another plugin to handle this. So this is a nice little kind of helper feature. This is where you can view the firewall and activity logs. And we don't have much activity yet because we're just setting this up and this also just shows a few entries you can see more on the portal and we're going to go to the portal and look at that in a few minutes then this is an option where you can make a backup of your ht access file doesn't hurt to do it i personally am pretty comfortable going in via ftp and taking a look at the ht access file but if you wanted to you could do this first before doing some of these other changes and then you'd have a backup before you installed webarcs Finally, you can create backups that you store in your Google Drive account. This is kind of fairly new, and I don't use WebArcs for backups, but it's an option if that's something you want to explore. When you go ahead and connect to Google Drive, you know, you have to log in to your account. Then you get this screen for the options for your backup schedule. You can set the frequency, the number of backups to keep, you can disable backups and you can revert to a backup, one of the ones you have. And then the method, the only option here is files and database. I'm not sure if maybe in the future they're thinking to add something. So we have one last thing to do here before going to the dashboard, and that is to set up two-factor authentication. So I'm gonna go to my user profile. So WebArcs has added this section here. The way two-factor authentication is set up with WebArcs is you use a program like Authy, which is the one I use. There's a Google Authenticator too, I think. We're gonna take a picture with my smartphone and the phone app will create a time-based code and when I log in, the website will check that code to make sure that what's being entered kind of matches the time frame. Let's set that up. Let me get my phone. And we're going to add an account on my phone. And now we scan the QR code. And it got it. So I'm going to save that. And I'm going to log out and let's try it and see if it works. And we're in. That's set up. It was really simple to do this in Authy, and I think that's available for iOS and Android. All right, so let's go to the WebArcs dashboard. So here we are in the dashboard. Let's take a look at the screens and options here. 
There's logout billing and settings. The settings area is interesting. Here you can update your password, whatnot. This is for getting into WebArcs here. If your team is using Slack, you can have your WebArcs notifications sent to your Slack channel. And then you can set emails for these different types of errors or issues, like if your site's down. And you can add a second email address here for backup. And then this is to set up two-factor authentication for WebArcs, not on your website. So for getting into the WebArcs dashboard. So back of the dashboard, here's the website. If we click on this, we're going to go in and look at the information about this website. But before we do that, let's look at these tabs here. This is actually a general place where you can enter firewall rules. These rules, I think, are added to your firewall by default, but you could change them if you want. These virtual patches are when there's a WordPress vulnerability, like in a plugin or theme, the WebArcs team will put in a rule to keep the exploit from being run on your site. And then that's sent to your WebArcs firewall in real time. So you don't have to go and update WebArcs each time a new vulnerability is found. It's pushed to your site to help keep it safe. And I think that's a really good and important feature. There are site reports, which I think would be useful for people if you're, for example, maintaining a site for someone else. You want to have a report to show kind of what you've been doing and the state of the site for them. There's a white label option that's an add-on where you pay extra for that. There's billing, there's team. I think you get five team members for, for a team and then you can have an add-on to add more. If you were running an agency and you had 100 sites, then you could have a few members of the agency have permissions to log in and check out the firewall and the security settings. This is a change log for WebArcs and then here's a support. And this is support chat here. You can enter something here and, and it'll take you to the knowledge base. And if that doesn't work, you can start a conversation with somebody on the team. All right, so let's go back to the dashboard. So this is the dashboard information just for the individual website. And here we see these are headers for the HTML pages, prevent cross-site scripting and other security headers. I've installed WebArcs probably a dozen times now, and probably about two-thirds of the time these are added when you install the plugins. And some of the times after a few days they show up. But if they don't, you can take any one of these headings here, plug it into the chat, and you'll get the help doc. And in the help doc, there'll be a place where it'll list all of these. Then you can go to the place where you do the custom HT access rules and paste them in there and hit rescan and wait a couple of minutes and they should show up green. You see it's checked that there's no vulnerable software. The PHP version is supported. There are no PHP errors. There's no cryptocurrency miner. The site isn't on any blacklist. It's not been mentioned in any hacker communities. So they're doing a lot of checks there that your domain name record is current and not about to expire and that your SSL certificate is current and not about to expire. This section down here is the same for all the tabs up there. So let's just go through these. These are the same notifications that we saw before. This is where you enter your name and email address for being contacted. So it's like the person who's in charge of the website. This is where you can get the ID and key if for some reason you need to enter it manually. And this is where you can download the plugin if you need to for any reason. Here's the firewall information. Nothing's been blocked yet. These are the uptime logs. So we can see that we're up and everything's okay. These are the activity logs. You can see here's where I enabled two-factor authentication and then where I logged in again. And one thing to point out is you can't delete these logs, not here or on your website. And that's good because if some bad guy got into your site, they wouldn't be able to delete the logs to hide their tracks. These are hardening options. These are the same options that you had on the website on the hardening firewall login protection and cookie notice tabs. But there's one really cool thing I wanted to show you. <laughs> and that is that if for some reason you lost your smartphone and you couldn't log in because you didn't have the code, 
You could log into WebArcs and disable this temporarily so that you could get into your site until you could fix it and then you could enable it again. So that's really nice. Then the software tab, this tells us information about these are the themes. WebArcs is the only plugin we have installed, but if we had other plugins installed, they would show up here. And if they were out of date, it would be noticed here and you, you could actually update it from within the interface here, which is nice. Now, WebArcs doesn't have a dashboard of all your sites, which would be nice because if you had 10 sites and each of them had some plugin out of date, you have to go through and look at each site one by one and then go here and update it. So I think that might be a feature they're thinking of adding. We'll see. But that would be nice because if you had a number of sites, then you could update them all quickly, make sure they were up to date. This lists the users for the site, and these are the firewall rules that are active. So that's the dashboard, and it has a lot of good features. Now in my site builder's guide to WordPress security, I create a list of things that I thought were important to look at. And so let's go take a look at that list now and see which of the boxes WebArcs ticks off, what features it has, what it does for us. So this is the full list of lockdown tasks from the Site Builder Guide. You can see it has a lot of things like related to choosing hosting or installing WordPress. There are some things which are plug-in territory and there are other things that are ongoing maintenance and whatever. So what I did here is I took that long list, pared it down to things that can be solved with a plug-in and I color-coded the items that WebArcs covers in blue and the ones where it covers some of it in yellow and the ones where it doesn't cover that task or that issue in pink. So from a high-level view, you can see that WebArcs is doing a lot of heavy lifting in terms of covering the web security needs. Let's just go through them quickly here. We have the firewall. The firewall gets just-in-time updates, which I think is, is big. There's login form brute force protection, two-factor authentication, protecting form submissions. This is via reCAPTCHA, but also stopping proxy form submissions by bots. It has the option for regular backups and off-site storage. You have activity logs, uptime monitoring, XML RPC, the option to disable that, to disable directory listing, and then there's some optional things, disable file editing and the ability to install themes and plugins. You have the ability to change the login URL. You have the ability to hide even that WordPress is being used. And then some of the things that it does partially is that WebArcs will check that your site correctly switches from HTTP to HTTPS if someone accesses it via HTTP. But it doesn't go through and check that whether or not you have mixed content of some things with HTTP and others with HTTPS. It does prevent user enumeration, but not via the REST API. Now, it appears that they may add that in a future update, so that would be good. There is some ability to block bot scanners, the WP scan, which is very popular among hackers. You have the option to block that. And you have the ability to disable a number of obscure WordPress features, which could be potential security holes. There are a lot of WordPress obscure features, so it doesn't do all of them, but it does a lot of them. And then from the WebArcs management dashboard, it would be faster if you have a lot of sites to log in there and do the theme and plugin updates, but it doesn't have a unified dashboard of all your sites where you could update the themes and plugins and core all at one time for multiple sites. So I kind of gave that a partial. WebArcs doesn't have any malware scanning they are focused on prevention, but I think that could be a good thing. There is no check of file permissions. There's no file change monitoring. There's no ability to change the WordPress salts, and there's no forcing strong passwords. So as you see, I've marked some of these things as required and others as optional and some as situational. You might have a different opinion on these, but I'm very pleased with the extent to which WebArcs provides a security solution 
and I'm pretty impressed with the WebArcs team. I think they're really on the ball. They've already kind of been the researchers to identify some plugin vulnerabilities, and they're sponsoring vulnerability research. So this is a team and a product which is, you know, moving forward rapidly in the right direction, in my opinion. This has been my walkthrough and review of WebArcs. I hope you found it interesting. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or feedback. Thank you for watching.